Hello everyone. For the first do-it-yourself project, we'll need a small box. You need to mark the lid and then cut out a hole. Insert a digital volt ammeter into the large hole and put a switch into the small hole. You need to install a power input socket into the second part of the case. We'll also need a cable entry connector. Now take the box lid, two alligator clips and two pieces of wire and connect everything according to the diagram shown on the screen. Carefully place everything inside and screw the lid on. At this stage, the homemade device is finished. Let's move on to testing it. Take a laptop charger, plug it into the outlet and connect it to the socket we installed in the box. We connect the glue to the battery and our device immediately shows its voltage. Next, press the button and the battery starts charging right away. When the current drops, the charging is complete. If you like the device, give it a like. For the second homemade device, you need two MF capacitors, ERFZ44 transistors, S9014 transistors, 4.7K ohm and 680 ohm resistors. You'll also need a mounting board where everything must be soldered as shown in the diagram on the screen. This is the board I ended up with. Next, take the case from a computer power supply and attach it there. Attach a socket to the case as well. We also need a 12 volt 3 lead transformer. We take the wires from the primary winding, that's the one for 220 volts, and connect them to the socket. Connect the transformer's secondary winding to the board as shown in the diagram. Next we take the wire with the cigarette lighter plug and also connect it to the board. To prevent the wires from coming off we secure them with a cable tie. Now we screw on the lid and test the homemade device. We plug our device into the cigarette lighter socket and measure the voltage at the outlet. As you can see, this turned out to be a 12 to 220 volt converter. The device has about 300 watts of power and can easily run a refrigerator or television. If you enjoyed this do-it-yourself project, comment below. For the third do-it-yourself, you'll need a medical syringe. Insert a thin copper wire from a cable into a needle.
Crimp the needle with pliers to secure the wire. Put the needle on the syringe and secure it with a drop of glue. You will also need two LEDs, one green and one red, two resistors, 200 ohms and one kilohm, a small 12 volt battery, an alligator clip, a piece of circuit board and about a meter of copper wire. Solder everything according to the diagram shown on the screen. This is the board I ended up with. Now according to the diagram, I need to solder the needle, the battery and the alligator clip to it. The homemade device is done. Now, see how it works. Attach the clip to any part of the car, meaning to the ground. Pierce the insulation of any wire with the needle, and if the green LED lights up, we've hit the negative. If the red one lights up, that's the positive. This is a simple car tester that you can easily make yourself. If you like this do-it-yourself project, give it a like. You'll need a cigarette lighter socket for your next do-it-yourself project. I'm cutting off part of it, because it doesn't quite fit for me. Next, disassemble the socket and solder wires to the contacts. We solder a wire to the second contact through a 1 com resistor. Now we reassemble the socket. Next, you'll need a small piece of tubing that fits the connector by diameter. Apply glue to the connector and insert it into the tube. You need to drill an 8mm hole in the tube. Next, take a 2.7550F capacitor and solder one of the wire leads to it. Insert the capacitor inside the tube, then solder the second lead through the button. Now secure the button. We'll also need a tube with a slightly smaller diameter than the previous one. Cut off a small piece from it. Trace the tube onto a piece of fiberglass laminate and cut out a circle along the outline. You need to drill two holes in the round piece of fiberglass laminate. Glue the cut-off neck inside the tube with the capacitor. Attach the wire leads to the bolts through a fiberglass laminate spacer. Place the fiberglass laminate in the neck, then connect a piece of nichrome wire to the bolts. The homemade device is finished, now let's move on to testing it. Insert our device into the cigarette lighter socket and wait for about 25 seconds. That's it, the capacitor is charged. Now watch how this homemade device works. Such a device will be useful, for example, if you stop somewhere on the road and need to start a fire away from the car. That's the kind of electric lighter we ended up with. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel. And for the fifth do-it-yourself project, you'll need an old mobile phone charger. Take the charger apart to get to the circuit board. We need to desolder the transistor and transformer from the circuit board.
We'll also need two resistors, one at 100 ohms and one at 1 comb. And the last thing you need to get is a piece of prototyping board and solder all these components together according to the schematic shown on the screen. Here's the board I ended up with. Now, according to the schematic, we solder the wire with the cigarette lighter plug and the lamp socket to it. Next, use a small box with a pre-installed switch, insert the board and solder the wires to the button. Now you can screw on the lid. Here's the homemade device we ended up with. Now watch how it works. Plug it into the cigarette lighter and flip the switch. As you can see, the 220 volt bulb lights up because this is a voltage converter. Did you like these do-it-yourself projects? Give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks everyone for watching and goodbye.